Um, so just a bit about myself. So my name is Sam Gibbons. Uh, I've been a local MP for almost four years now. Uh, I've lived in the Ukraine electorate for uh, nearly 10 years. Um, and as people who do know me, I'm pretty passionate about transport and uh, transport issues. Um, personally, you know, public transport is my main form of transport. I'm a, a commuter cyclist, I ride into Parliament when I can. Um, Paran commits the smallest electorate geographically. Um, it's very good um, because you can pretty much walk to almost all your meetings within uh, Paran. Um, and that's not to say I don't drive um, a, a bit, particularly now that you've got the young kids strapped in the back, you do it more often than you like. Um, and having lived in the area um, for nearly 10 years now, um, a lot of the issues that people um, raise with me are, are issues that I've had personal experience with. You know, whether it's the dangerous um, pedestrian crossings, like Dandenong Road, uh, overcrowding on trains and trams, uh, the lack of services at Hawksburn and Windsor Station, uh, you know, unsafe cycling. I mean, these are issues that I've experienced um, personally. And, you know, whether it's the, the big issues like South Yarra Station or, or some of the smaller issues like um, Helping retailers become, helping shops become Nike retailers. Um, certainly, that's been a main focus of mine as a local MP. Um, you know, I think both here in Paran and Victoria, you know, we're really facing a big, a big challenge um, in terms of transport. Uh, we're at a critical juncture where I think Melbourne's population is going to overtake uh, Sydney by 2031, and if we don't take drastic steps within the next decade, um, we're really facing a future of growing congestion, of overcrowding that's really going to just ruin the livability of Cran and Melbourne um, for generations to come. And there's three factors that are really contributing to this. Uh, as I said, we've got a rapidly growing population. Um, we've had inertia um, from previous Liberal and Labor governments where we just haven't had the investment uh, in both infrastructure and ongoing services. Uh, and maintenance that we've needed. I think, you know, I'd like to give credit where credit's due. I think that in some way that has been turned around by the current government. Um, and when we have had investment, we have had, you know, a real business as usual approach, which has been uh, to prioritise these massive freeways and these massive toll roads, uh, like, you know, we're seeing with the Westgate Tunnel, the East West Link, the North East Link. Um, and when there has been investment in uh, things like public transport, sustainable transport, um, it really has been a piecemeal approach. And to address these, uh, these key factors, um, we really need uh, a long-term plan, you know, a plan for the public good, uh, a plan to deal with population growth, uh, one that puts the public interest first. Uh, as it stands at the moment, this state doesn't have a transport plan. Uh, and in the absence of that plan, that's why we're seeing projects like the Westgate Tunnel that are uh, really more in the interests of the profits of Transurban than in solving um, Melbourne's congestion needs. Uh, we need, uh, on top of that plan, we need significant and ongoing investment. Um, that, makes, that means we're ensuring that we're you know, taking advantage of record low uh, interest rates um, to borrow to ensure that we can fund the infrastructure we need um, and making sure we have that ongoing funding in the services we need too. Uh, and when we get that investment, you know, it really needs to be a transformative approach rather than business as, movable, uh, business as usual. That means moving away from those mega toll roads that are just going to increase traffic uh, and suck up the budget for years to come and in heavily invest in public transport and sustainable transport instead. Uh, and that investment, it needs to be holistic and transformative. You know, we do need to transform our train network from that ageing unreliable network that it is uh, into that high capacity, high frequency uh, uh, metro system. Uh, similarly with our trams, we need greater separation and greater safety for our train network. Um, really shake up our bus routes to, bus routes to make them uh, far more straightened up and direct. Uh, you know, I think, as I said, you know, I think this government has made a start with the Melbourne Metro and what they're doing on the Dandenong line. Um, but we can't stop there and it needs to be rolled out across the entirety of the network. Uh, here in Paran, I think we've got three key, well, we've got three key uh, priorities. Uh, obviously, South Yarra Station, you know, upgrading South Yarra Station and connecting to the Melbourne Metro has been uh, one of my top priorities as a local MP. Uh, we've had over, you know, over a decade, uh, not a cent barely invested in that station. Um, and it's good to see that we've got some investment, $12 million, that's a start. Uh, we're going to need much more to make sure the existing station is upgraded to meet the needs, particularly of those people living in Forest Hill. Uh, the, Greens, the Greens policy and the Greens plan to connect the Melbourne Metro to South Yarra Station, that's something that residents overwhelmingly want. 
um, and that the Greens have been the only party to consistently hold that position since the inception of Melbourne Metro when it was first announced um, some 10 years ago. It's a fight that we shouldn't have to be having because if the previous Liberal government had included it in the Melbourne Metro when it was first uh, planned and actually got on and built the thing, and if the Labor government had done the same, we wouldn't be having this debate. South Yarra Station interchange with Melbourne Metro would actually be being built right now. So I'm committed to keep fighting for it and making sure that at the very least, uh, the Melbourne Metro tunnel is built in a way that we can put in a station in the future. Uh, the second thing we need locally is uh, we really need to just get more services. I mean, we've got the coverage, we've got the train lines, we've got the tram lines. We now need to put on more services. It's overcrowded during the peak, uh, and some of the waits during the off-peak hours, you know, 15 to 20 minutes, it's just simply unacceptable for an inner-city area. Um, so putting on uh, those extra services uh, and building infrastructure that allows for that, the high-capacity signalling, getting the bigger trains and bigger trams on the network, uh, that's got to be an absolute priority. Uh, and thirdly and finally, uh, cycling and walking. You know, it's, it's oft uh, forgotten, but it's incredibly cost effective. It's incredibly effective. It's really low hanging fruit in terms of transport. We absolutely need to be having those investments. They're like the separated line, bike lanes along uh, St Kilda Road, like safer pedestrian crossings and shared zones. Um, so they're the things, they're the key priorities uh, that I'm going to be fighting for. Um, and if re-elected, I'm going to continue fighting for those things. Uh, of course, the Greens are aiming to be in balance of power, and uh, the Leader of the Opposition himself has said that this election is between the Liberals and the Greens in balance of power. And I absolutely agree with him. And if we're in balance of power, we'll be in a very strong position to deliver on our transport policies that are going to keep Greens Thanks a lot.